Uh, first of all, I would like to give you a little bit of feedback or uh, background better to, to let you know about what's my experience, what's been my different uh, experience in terms of where I had to learn about uh, omnichannel or about uh, what's the digital journey that we're trying to, to, to think of in, in, this, in these sessions. So um, I used to be at Zara, uh, Zara.com, which was uh, one of the most uh, challenging uh, experiences in my professional career because of the huge change that they had to do on in terms of omnichannel. Since they have more than 5,000 stores around the world, uh, one of the key uh, facts that they were trying to figure out is how to make uh, a real competitive statement against Amazon and against some other uh, competitors that are pure players and that have a very uh, adapted logistics to uh, the final consumer on, on, on e-commerce. So uh, one of the key points there was, uh, and that, that was very related to what you were saying about the, the delivery order management is that it doesn't make much sense that you can uh, have a pizza in 45 minutes and it's uh, 9 euros, 10 euros or whatever and that you can't buy a jacket which is 150 dollars or 150 euros in, in one hour instead of two days. So at the end that's a matter of availability and proximity. So if, if you're a brand like Pepe Jeans for example that we have 200 stores, that's nice but that's not that strong. If you're a brand like uh, Zara, that you have 5,000 stores around the world and, and, and in the most important cities, so probably very close to the, to the majority of your consumers, that allows you to be even faster than Amazon on, on anyone. Actually, right now, they are already uh, get, getting that into production and they are shipping on, on instant shipping on many cities in the world. And probably that will be uh, the, the rule or the, the basics in the following uh, years or months. So that was an experience that I, I, I liked very much. And previously, I, was, uh, I founded my own company, which was Homing.com. And it was an e-commerce on uh, furniture and decoration. And actually, it was just the opposite to Zara. So we were really little. Uh, we had a huge uh, logistics challenge, which was uh, dealing with furniture, which is really, really tough. Uh, but actually, both worlds had a lot of uh, similarities. And, and, and thinking on that lean way that we had to think on homing, it helped a lot also to, to, to leverage on that way of uh, approaching the problems when, when in Zara. So uh, I would like to share to, with you today uh, different uh, thoughts about Omnichannel. Um, the first part of it is more about uh, the mindset that we are trying to have in terms of what we want to do. And then the second part of it, which I think is uh, even more important, is about how we want to do things. And, and what uh, is over Omnichannel, which is not just about operations, just about uh, infrastructure, but also about how we uh, think of or our consumer. So in, in the experience I want to share today, it's about Pepe Jeans. So uh, Pepe Jeans is a brand, a fashion brand. Uh, I don't know if you are all familiar with it, but it's it's a London uh, British brand which was founded on, on 73, 1973. And we basically have three different uh, touch points with our consumer, um, which is retail, wholesale, and online, obviously, as, as, as uh, most of the multi-brand or not vertical uh, brands have. In our case, we are actually almost 70% of our revenue comes from wholesale, so that makes much more difficult from our side to get a real omni-channel approach. Because it's not only about controlling your stores, it's also about uh, giving the same experience and having some control about the multi-brand stores. So at the end, what we have is that uh, even though we have these three channels, at the end we all want to have a unique brand identity which uh, it doesn't matter whether the consumer approaches the brand, we want to have uh, one unique brand. So uh, that's probably the most challenging uh, fact that we have ahead right now because all the multi-brand stores, and in, in our case, we, we work with Galerie Lafayette or El Corte Inglés, but also with uh, very little uh, multi-brand stores. And one of the good things about how people are starting to uh, understand on the channel is that they are starting to understand that they need to deliver the same value 
that the brand is offering at its core. Because if not at the end, uh, what they are selling on their stores, it's losing a lot of value against what we invest on advertising, what we invest on the celebrities and the models and so on. The next point would be about stock. Uh, and that was very related to, some st to the delivery order management. And it's the same stock availability. If I'm selling something here in, 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 in Poland and that product is not available on our uh, fulfillment center here in, 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 in Warsaw, it doesn't make any sense that if I'm shipping from Spain many other products here and I'm paying the same rates, uh, I can't fulfill that order from my store in Madrid. And that's probably one of the most important changes on Omnichannel is that we will be able to really optimize the stock levels. Uh, probably one of the most amazing things that Zara was been do has been doing in the last uh, decades is how they manage the fulfillment within the stores because they have a two-day replenishment service system that really goes to the really, really fine-tuned by store in terms of what reference they sell there. So they have the perfect rotation, the perfect uh, uh, risk assessment for every reference. So at the end, if, if we are able to m really make a liquid stock availability and, and, and any consumer can access our product, th it doesn't matter where the product it is. I think that's a great, great uh, step forward. So right now, that's one of the key points where we are working on. And that would mean that we'll have to have real-time stock information, which is really tough because you have to have something very strong to measure in the stores. And then on top of that, a delivery order management that really works on, uh, on that direction. The next point uh, is about the experience. We invest a lot and we work a lot to give uh, a coherent experience in our stores. Uh, so, at the end, that really means uh, 16, 17% of the total touch points with our consumers. So, it's really key that we are able to deliver that on the rest of the channels, both online and, 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 and wholesale. And that's probably one of the, the, the most challenging uh, goals that we have ahead. And then, a unified vision of the data. At the end, the consumer is the same one. Sometimes he will be buying at El Corte Inglés. Sometimes he will be buying at our own store. And many times we will be buying on online. But at the end, it's the same person. And we have to analyze it. And we have to understand that person on a unified vision. Because if not, we will be much more confused when we want to try to, to approach him and we want to make actions to, to get to him. So um, I'm sorry, because I'm seeing that the typography it was not uh, in the same computer, so some of the, of the text are not showing properly. But at the end, it means that if we have a unified vision of him, we will need to have an integration communication. So if someone goes to, the, to a multi-brand uh, department store and he buys something, he has to have something that really connects him to the brand, and then he, we get him into a consumer journey that we can control and we can offer a coherent experience. So basically, when we try to think about what are the next steps when uh, trying to get on, on, onto this path, and, and again, I'm talking more about uh, like the operational and uh, infrastructural developments on, on this sense, and it's pretty similar to what you were mentioning before. It's the first one, I think the first two, which are key and very easy to do, it's uh, delivering store and in-store returns. Just to let you know, and Pepe Jeans Group is also owner of Hackett. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Hackett. It's a, it's, it's a fashion brand which is a affordable luxury. So it's kind of luxury, but it's, it's, a, it's not on, on like on, uh, it's a little bit lower than Hugo Boss, for example. So once we started to include delivering store and in-store returns, we saw that in basically, for example, in the United Kingdom, the online sales were up just about like 40% because most of our consumers uh, were really interested on uh, buying online because of the uh, convenience of it, but then uh, being able to be in the store for return it because uh, they were willing to try it, to, to, to be able to change it if, if they were not happy with that so they can make the change directly in the store. So it's a mix of between both worlds that are, on one hand it gives convenience to the consumer but on the other hand, it gives a lot of uh, energy 
and traffic to the stores. And for example, to the store that we have on Regent Street in London, the traffic, the food traffic, it went up like 16% on, uh, on, on the tr footfall traffic just because of delivery in store and in store returns, which was very important for us. Then the next point, uh, which also had a very uh, good um, impact in this case, for example, in Zara, it was the nearest store availability when you are trying to look for products. And in, in fashion, there is a lot of, of uh, Ropo, which is research online purchase offline. So if you are able to show where your products are at any moment, uh, just showing uh, the different stores what they can pick up that product, even though if they're not able to buy it, because I think that's like the next step, but that means a lot more complexity into the process. But at the end, to just to be able to show, okay, if you like this product, you can go ahead right now and buy it at whatever place. I think it's really important. It drives a lot of traffic to the, to, to the stores. And then some of them, it's what's the, the, the digital, uh, how we introduce digital touch points into the uh, stores. So the CA device, it's something that we uh, call uh, in that sense because it's, it's not about just sales, it's about customer experience enhancement. And uh, the CA device uh, for big brands, uh, mainly verticals, are driving right now more than 20% of the e-commerce sales. And basically, if I'm going to the store, I can't find this jacket on the size that I'm looking for. It doesn't make any sense that the sales agent can't sell it to me directly in the store. So um, we launched it on, on Sarah three years ago, four years ago already, and uh, in like one year time, uh, it was one of the main uh, drivers for sales in, in 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 online sales because at the end, you are selling from the website, but on on a device in the store. So uh, and then the fitting room, which which is a space where you can offer a lot of uh, value added. Now I'll show you some of the pictures on some of some trials that we are doing on our fitting rooms, which are working pretty well. So on this sense, uh, I just tried to draw here kind of uh, our uh, ideal map of what we would like to, to achieve. So if these are the digital touch points that we have with our consumers, desktop, web, uh, mobile, this is, would be our warehouse. This would be our consumer house, and this would be uh, one of our stores and a multi-brand store, which makes a huge difference for us. And the difference is that, as I was saying before, if, if I'm Pepe Jeans, which is just a 200 own retail stores, it's good, 200, but it's really little against H&M, Zara, and so on. But if I'm able to involve the doors where I'm selling my products, which are 7,000, I'm huge. So. The big, big, big challenge on, on, on Omnichannel is to be able to leverage on the potential that we have on every single touch point that we have with our consumers. Um, so, just would, I, I, wanna, just, I, I was just having another idea about how we can leverage on that, but I will, I will share with you later. So, the goal here is that at the end, of course, a consumer that, that goes through our website or mobile or whatever, he could make an order, and fulfill it from the warehouse to his house. He could uh, fulfill it from the warehouse to the store, which would be just delivering the store. We could also make uh, an order directly from the store that would be going to the warehouse. There would be also orders that are made online uh, that will be just picking up in the store. And then we start to make it more complex, more complex, but probably it's more complex for the company hugely more simple for the consumer because if I'm a consumer, I just want to get the product that I'm looking for. So why not, if I'm a consumer, the guy go to the store and I buy and I want to receive it directly at home to uh, just ship it from any other store to my house. But the most important point, and that's why I was talking about wholesale, about multi-brand, in this case for us, we have 7,000 doors so why not, if I'm buying a product online at Pepe Jeans, uh, and one of our customers, which is a store that has Pepe Jeans, Levi's, Lee, whatever, if they have the product, I should be able to uh, deliver that from that store. And that, that completely changed the game, because 
my customer, my wholesale customer, it gets a direct sales without doing anything. And that changes everything because then he won't be able just to sell whatever he bought. He will be able to sell everything on the brand. So that's, I think that's a great uh, mindset and, and, and some of the big players are doing that right now. I will talk about uh, that on my last slide. So at the end is something that is not just about making omnichannel what I control. It's making omnichannel everything that is just my brand. On verticals, this change means nothing. On brands, I think this change means everything. So um, it's more and more it gets a little many directions. It's at the end, it's just trying to make everything uh, instead of being something uh, complex, just making something liquid where it doesn't matter. If it's my brand, I can offer to any consumer around the world or around the, 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 the continent. So this would be about like the whole network that we are trying to achieve in terms of uh, omnichannel vision for our consumers. Some of the, the, the experience that we just deliver are uh, the CA device, which is not only a, a sales tool, but also it's a experience tool where we can offer uh, related products we have you know, for the lookbook with the models and so on. And then on the, on the fitting rooms, we just made um, a trial uh, with RFID, which is uh, the kind of electronic tags for the, for the garments. So when you walk into a fitting room, uh, the, the screen directly identifies who have you have, what, what you are getting from, from the store. So it shows you the garment. It shows you related products. It shows you the, the sizes that are available in the store. So if you want to change that size because that's not fitting properly, it just you just click here and then you get someone going to the fitting room and changing the product so you don't have to and wear again and, and get out of the, the fitting room and going back. So these are some of the, 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 the different uh, products that we're working on and, and they are giving uh, basically the, the, the CA device great results and the fitting room is making a more than great results, great experience in the stores. So that was more about um, what we want to do. And then uh, I think there is a very, very important topic here is what we want to do. So we talk about uh, omnichannel. Usually we talk about uh, deliveries, uh, operations, chains and systems and so on. I think that also, it's very, very important that the experience that we offer to our consumers is 360. So, uh, some of the different actions that we did in that sense is that uh, taking in mind some of the major changes in, in, in the digital uh, world that we live in now is that 10 years ago, they used to say, if you are not on the internet, you don't exist. I think that right now, uh, it would be if you have not a constant social image flow, you don't exist because the, the, the amount of content that has been sharing every day is it's huge. In, in this case, I, I wanted to bring two examples, is that more than 1.8 billion uh, images are socially shared every day, which changes completely the way people communicate. And even more, there are some of, of, of the big, big trends in terms of content consumption is video, which is hugely increasing and getting every day more and more space for an image. And in this case, the, the, the fact was 300 hours uh, are shared by video every minute. And this probably doesn't just m w change the way we communicate between the people. It changes the way we communicate between brands and consumers. So the thing is that we used to talk about image campaigns for the fashion brands and so on. And that's how me, as a brand, talk about myself. Uh, but for the people, every day is much more important about how, uh, to know about how other people talk about me. So what other people say about me has much more credibility and much more reliability than uh, myself uh, saying to myself. So in this sense, we, we launched something here, which is called uh, Pepe on You, which is coming from a company uh, with, that has been just sold right now. It's Olapic. And the fact is that we track uh, the whole uh, network looking for socially shared uh, pictures that are uh, wearing our 
uh, garments or jeans. So it's not. This is not a picture that I, 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 we took as a brand. This is not a model. This is not a studio. Whatever. This is just real people that make really nice pictures and that actually work even better than our campaign pictures. So we took to that to digital. We actually linked that to to the product, so uh, you can see a nice product, uh, wear by a nice girl, but also you can find it and, and buy it. And after seeing the result that we had on, on, on digital, we tried to get that to the stores also. So that's why I think that when we talk about Omnichannel, it's also very important to think about how we can leverage the experience that we have on digital, uh, getting that to the stores and all the way backwards. I think that it's not only about uh, getting the, the, the ecosystem, but also fulfilling the ecosystem with content, uh, what we're really expecting, the, the people expecting to see. So in this case, for example, we were rolling the social pictures that were most popular on the cities uh, that we had these, these, these stores, and the, the results in the store were really, really uh, great, because we were not just showing what we think we are, it's what the people think we are, and what the people feel and express uh, about the brand. So that was that worked really well in terms of uh, sales, but also in terms of engagement. And then another experience that we were trying to uh, focus from the real beginning on an omni-channel way. So it's, it's trying to get not only from the omni-channel operations, but also to the omni-channel marketing in terms of experience. So we, we had to do a, something which was for me uh, an important challenge to, 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 to like launch a, an action with our campaign that we have with Red Bull. We are sponsorships for uh, the Formula One Red Bull uh, racing team. So we had uh, Ricciardo and, and, and Danny as uh, our main uh, models for the campaign and so on. And we're thinking about doing something that was really digital, but also really uh, physical in the store. So we could get to both ways. So just let me show you the, 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 the first introduction for, uh, for, for the idea and then how it became a success on the stores. So what we basically did with this action was to, to get uh, something which was very difficult to connect, uh, the Formula One to, 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 to the fashion brand, uh, and make a driver to the stores. So what we did is we, we achieved uh, an agreement with Samsung. So we developed uh, the first uh, skydiving uh, experience on, on virtual reality. So what we created it was on one side the digital uh, assets to be able to socialize and, and to share all this content, but then driving all the traffic to the stores. So we uh, build like a sp something I will show you now. It was a, like a like a space in the stores where you could hang, and you, with the Samsung Gear VR, the virtual reality the uh, uh, glasses, the people could actually 
live the experience that the models uh, did on, on, on the video. So it worked really well because on, on one hand it gave us a lot of uh, contents to, to, to drive sales in the website, but also on every uh, single city, uh, actually I think we also did it on, in here in Barça, um, we did uh, the experience on the main stores, on the main flagships, and it was something that really connected from uh, our digital touch points of the communities, everyone on Facebook was talking about it and so on. So at the end it was a real omnichannel uh, approach for that. Let me say, show you the video of how we did that happened in, in, in the stores. So uh, here again, you, the, the goal was uh, to, to create something that it's not thought just about, okay, let's do a digital approach for this, or this, this do a, a, a event, a, a retail event in the store or whatever. I think that it, and it obviously it adds a lot of complexity to the process because it's not just about thinking about uh, CPC when we are talking about online or about uh, footfall for when you're talking about retail stories about how we can really as a brand use all of our assets as just one thing and, and it, it, it's, it's the same what you're talking about about systems and the same what you're talking about marketing so in this case our uh, community we got we have, we have 2.5 million uh, users on Facebook and this action we knew that it was going to be very very strong on Facebook so we really leverage, was the first time that we really leverage from our Facebook uh, accounts uh, to drive traffic into the store. So um, I think that's more about uh, how we uh, approach the, 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 the initial scope for, for every action. So that's, uh, that was the second part of, of, of the presentation about the, the 360 experience and how uh, I believe it can affect every single area in the company. Obviously, this is more about communication, but it happens with customer service, with everything. And then the next point is about marketplaces. I think that in, 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 in this uh, place, well, you have been also mentioning before, but uh, I think that it, the, the, the world is, again, changing, and changing very fast. Uh, probably most of you are familiar with uh, Tmall, which is uh, the biggest uh, e-commerce I think right now in the world already. It's it's uh, much more uh, much bigger than Zalando already. Uh, sorry, than Zalando uh, than Amazon, uh, and uh, basically is like the 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 biggest e-commerce in, in in China. So they are e-commerce, but they don't have any product. They don't fulfill. They don't uh, take any uh, of the operations. They have another company that do also operations if you want as a brand for a service. But Tmall itself is just 100% pure player, 100% marketplace. And they only get all the traffic from the country. And then they sell to the brands and are the brands that are fulfilling, shipping, taking customer service, and so on. And I think that some of the key drivers on this change are uh, Zalando and Farfetch. Zalando, as you all know, uh, until now they have been stocking product, they have been buying from the brands and then selling to the consumer. So they are really well at getting traffic, and getting big, and getting a, a huge exposure of the offer. On the last, uh, I was going to say years, but it's even months, they have uh, opened uh, the range to pure marketplace model. So, for example, in, a, in the case of Pepe Jeans, we are not only selling uh, with them on a wholesale buying at the beginning of the season. They come to our offices, they select the best product for them, they buy it, and they stock it in the warehouse. But on top of that, now we are integrating. So they're saying, okay, if I'm uh, selling uh, 600 reference from Pepe Jeans because I took risk and invest on them, and then I want to buy them, buy, and I want to sell them, why not opening also the range to the product that 
they have on their own stock. So we are opening that. So that's going to really change the potential of some spaces like uh, Zalando. So if they've been growing on, I don't know, 30%, 40%, 25% in the last year, probably this will make them able to be growing again much faster because they will be leveraging on the stock that the brands already have. So at the end, it's a great win for me because the stock that I have on the e-commerce warehouse won't only be showing on my website, but also will be showing on Zalando or on Amazon or whatever. But the big change here is that uh, the big, big players, and I'm not talking about Amazon, for example, which I think the model is quite different, but the big ones are uh, changing the model again to, or not again, sorry, changing the model to, 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 to marketplace. And then that happens not, on, not only with the pure players like Zalando, but also happens with the traditional uh, department stores, the big ones. So Harvey Nichols, for example, or El Corte Inglés, they are launching uh, the digital corners, what they call them. It's actually basically it's a marketplace. So we, they will be selling not only the product that they already have from the brand, but they will be selling also everything uh, that is in our site that we have in our in our own warehouse. So I think this makes uh, the market a little bit more complex. And in terms of omnichannel, I was really surprised on how Zalando is going very, very quick on that. And last time I was in Germany, I knew that, for example, Adidas, Adidas is uh, selling on Zalando not only the e-commerce products, but also the products that they have on the stores. So you might be browsing uh, an Adidas sneakers on Zalando, and you are buying them from Zalando, but those sneakers are not coming from the warehouse of Salando. They are not coming from the warehouse in Adidas. They are coming from the uh, store that they have in Munich. So that's, again, a huge change because it's allowing full availability of the stock. And that's what I was talking about before, that, for example, for a brand like Pepe Jeans, it's not just talking about controlling my stock. It's about having full, full access to the consumers anywhere. I don't care if they are at Zalando, if they are at Corte Inglés or whatever. If a consumer is looking for my brand, he has to have it, whatever the product is. So I think uh, this is all from my side. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening.